This module is on a research technique called ZMET, which stands for the Zaltman Metaphor Elicitation Technique. That's a mouthful, but it's a very important uh, research method that we need to uh, be familiar with when studying uh, brands. So what it is, it is, a, it is a technique which attempts to get at consumers' uh, subconscious processing. Okay, so when you think about things in life, when you go about your day to day business, okay, there are a stream of conscious thoughts that you have. What restaurant to go to for lunch, if you're thirsty, what you should get to drink, um, how much you should study for a particular class, and you think about these things and you know you think about these things. But oftentimes, when you encounter brands and products, you will also have a stream of subconscious or even unconscious thinking that goes on behind the scenes. There is a substantial amount of research on unconscious thought, which is thought that occurs in the background that you're not consciously aware of. So, uh, in fact, there are there is research that supports the notion that there are large portions of the brain that engage in unconscious processing. And again, that uh, occasionally the unconscious brain will be feeding information over to the conscious brain and that gives you feelings of deja vu, uh, gut feels, um, if you've ever been in a room that you feel like you've been in before but you know you haven't, oftentimes your unconscious brain is feeding information from memories that maybe you don't consciously process in some time in your past to, um, to help inform um, your conscious processing. So it's a fascinating area of research. It's very, very hard to research that type of processing, but the ZMET technique does get close to it. And what it is, it's, it is a projective technique. And a projective research technique is one that gets at information that consumers are either unwilling or unable to articulate on their own. So if, um, for example, if I were to conduct a survey on shoplifting behavior and I ask you how much you shoplift, you probably um, are going to be a bit reluctant to, to answer that. Um, or if I ask you why do you like the color green, um, you probably can't answer that um, other than just simply, well, I just like it. So there's a lot of things that are out there that consumers have difficulty uh, consciously processing and articulating that a set of research techniques called projectives can get at that information in a little bit better and more efficient manner. So the Zaltman metaphor elicitation technique is basically um, one of those approaches. And um, what you're going to be doing for this assignment is you're going to take your assigned brand, which is going to be the focus of your ZMET analysis. You're going to identify two to three other people that you want to uh, have participate. And those would be people who are not part of your team. You, of course, can have all of your team members also participate in this. Okay. Um, because everybody will, uh, everybody uh, can provide whether or not they're part of the team or not can provide interesting input. So this is in addition to other research that you may be doing, other survey research, other focus group research, other observational research, that and it's complementary to all of those techniques as well. So the way the ZMET works, and again, you'll need to read the article by Gerald Zaltman. He's the inventor of the ZMET technique. He is a former professor at Harvard. And um, the way it works is you approach people with instructions to think about your brand, okay? So whatever your brand for your team project is, ask them to think about it, ask them if they are familiar with it, and then the instructions are very simple where you give them a couple of days um, to go out and find images that in their mind represent the brand in some way. So if I were to use the brand Tide laundry detergent as an example, and if I were to conduct a ZMED of that, I might get images back from people who uh, might be images of a, a, a sunny spring morning in a field of wildflowers. Uh, I might get images of, 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 of puffy clouds in a blue sky. I might get images of bubbles. I might get images of smiling faces. And all of those things represent aspects of the brand to that particular individual. And they tap into very deeply set and deeply held 
um, memories and beliefs about the brand, whether or not that particular person uses the brand or not. So um, oftentimes, if, if a person finds a picture of a rainbow to represent tide, for example, um, that might suggest, and, 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 and that might suggest that, that the brand Tide repre is a very colorful brand and able to get all different colors very clean, okay, or something like that. So you'll ask people to identify and find several pictures online to assemble them into a collage, a PowerPoint, a slide, uh, or slides that to them represent what the brand means to them, okay? And then, um, and then have them give that back to you, and then you'll need to spend a couple of minutes asking them about each of the individual pictures they chose and why. Some of those pictures they'll be able to very clearly explain. Other pictures that respondent might say, well, that's simply how it makes me feel. And when I feel happy and clean, I think of rainbows, or I think of clouds, or I think of, uh, uh, of fields of wildflowers. So those are the things you're after. You're after some of those very deep-seated and hidden uh, thoughts that people have about brands. And all of this is to improve your own understanding of the brand that you're studying for the semester. So um, it should take a couple of days for you to do this. And um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to uh, turn in as part of your assignment, uh, your collage from each of your respondents. And again, that should be, you can have your own team members do it and then get two to three additional other people. So anywhere from five to seven or eight people should participate. And then some notes about, from, about your um, interactions and interviews with those people after you have gotten their collage back from them. And, and then all together, that will be, take all of those collages and have all of the input from the respondents and, uh, and, and, and analyze that and try and identify common themes across the respondents. Okay, so cleanliness, fresh, um, uh, bright, happy, those are going to be themes that might emerge. And again, that's going to help you understand the deep uh, hidden meanings of the brands that you study. So good luck and uh, we'll see you in class.